The SAPGM operations account for 39% of our group energy demand. And due to the infrastructure and extensive conventional mining methods, energy, uh, electricity is the predominant form of electricity and as, re as a result creates a very unique emissions profile where 97% of the emissions stem from ESCOM coal-fired and diesel-fired electricity. It's anticipated that this emission profile will decline over time as in line with our PGM production profile, as well as when the uh, renewable energy increases in terms of the national energy mix. We, however, have a number of active decarbonizations currently underway. Similarly to our South African gold operations, we have advanced energy management practices being implemented within these operations, which largely results in 60,000 tons of greenhouse gas emissions being avoided, primarily through the deployment of digital twins and as well as uniquely developing an energy culture. Due to the emissions profile, one of the strongest levers that we can pull is the deployment of renewable energy. And I'll talk to our solar PV project shortly, but I previously mentioned our wind energy projects, which will enable rapid decarbonization of these particular operations. In terms of the remnant diesel that's used at our mechanized operations, we're exploring the use of battery electric vehicles, as well as setting scope three targets for those emissions that are occurred through the third party processing of our concentrate. Electricity will continue to remain the focus at this operation, so given its predominance in terms of emissions. If I talk quickly to our uh, solar PV projects, given our expanded footprint in the Northwest, we undertook initially a pre-feasibility study and then later a feasibility study into embedded solar PV generation directly into our operations. The studies confirmed the, the strong rationale around deploying these projects given its decarbonization and commercial potential. The long life assets as well as the associated demand can support easily up to 175 megawatts of solar PV across three specific sites an 80 megawatt project uh, located within the RPM complex, uh, specifically between Butterpele Mine and the UG2 and Retrofit Concentrator. A 65 megawatt project that will be co-located next to the career complex that will supply the K4 shaft, the K4 concentrator, the K3 shaft, as well as the K3 concentrator. And lastly, on the eastern portion of our footprint, a 30 megawatt project that will directly inject power into the Roland smelter. The assessment included an extensive land study that confirmed that we have available Sabanya land that can accommodate solar PV, and there were no critical flaws in terms of engineering, environmental, geotechnical, regulatory, social or security aspects. We also confirmed that we have adequate substations that will allow the solar PV projects to be directly interconnected into our operations. The total cost of the project will be in the order of 2.5 to 2.8 billion that will be funded through third party PPA structures. This results in us having minimal capital outlay, access to renewable energy at a 30 to 50 percent discount to grid supplied electricity from day one. This generates a significant MPV for these operations as well as a significant decarbonization potential and anticipation of pending carbon taxes for scope 2 that will also offset these liabilities. We're currently targeting financial close in the first half of 2023 with a commercial operation in early 2025. The project schedule is currently being driven by the permitting activities of which the environmental impact assessment, the rezoning and the subdivision of land have already been initiated.